Right, we're back. I'm um, gonna really quick one today. Um, I was playing around with an old CD and I kind of cutting it up. I was trying to get the layers apart, but I kind of come up with this idea because this the backing kind of peels off if you can see that. And when you flip it over, try and get a, a decent shot of it it's really really colorful and most of you have got old cds lying around well pretty much everyone has so what we're gonna do i've, I've had a play around with this already what you want to do is just carefully peel away the backing I'm not sure if all cds are the same it doesn't matter if it, it crumbles it can get a bit messy but you want to just persevere and, and just peel away. It's not going to do it now, is it? <laughs> what I did was got a blade and just very carefully kind of worked it underneath to be able to peel it off. Let's see if I've got another one that I've got. See, I don't want to be showing a blade on my YouTube video. But you can. Here we go, look. Oh, it's broken off. Great start, Dan. But you can get bigger sheets of this to come off. I think because the tweezers are pointed, it's it's kind of breaking it. Let me try with just I'll just get it going and then I'll use my fingers. It's fiddly guys, it's fiddly. But it can be done. I've done it. Hit over 30k on the subs. There you go get kind of bigger sheets but we don't want it bigger anyway we're gonna break it up yeah just hit over 30k on the subs thank you very much if you haven't hit that button for me hit that down in the bottom right hand screen for me and um, we're going to be doing this with UV resin today so we've got the Lex resin UV you could you could do this with um, regular two-part uh, should we give it a try We'll give it a try. I'll just do the one with two part and just see what happens. So what I'm going to do is get prepared and, and, and spend the next half hour <laughs> peeling off the backs of the CDs just so I've got enough to play around with kind of one of these with two part and then we do two UV. So I'll see you in a bit. Right, we're good to go. You can see I've got some quite big sheets peeled off as well. I managed to get... It actually was a lot quicker when I used the, the blade. Just be very careful. Um, and I'm sure I can find another use. I know they're scratched. I could probably find another use for this in something else. I think the resin would probably clear the scratches anyway. But we'll keep that for something else. So we are using alongside the UV resin. I need to be really careful with my camera arm. I broke it last week. And I've temporarily fixed it with some UV resin. So I'm just hoping it holds up. So we're going to be using the collab resin. This is now available in the UK. So the links are in the description. Thank you to all of those who have gone out and bought it. Also a massive shout out to my channel members. Massive support to the channel. So this is my two part. Just making sure it's streak free. I might actually try and see if I can get a pair of earrings out of this as well. Let's get this in first and see what we're left with. I think I'm gonna back this as well. So I'm not gonna fully fill the cavity. And I think we'll go with these teardrops. I might have enough for something else as well. Again, I'm leaving enough for a backing. Potentially. Uh, we can go for another oval as well. Mixed up a little bit too much. But it's fine. Should we go over heart? We've got enough. I'm not going to show the whole process anyway. I'll skip through the boring parts. Carefully move my camera. Again, I want to leave enough. Might have enough for 
I was going to go for. I'll go with one of these. I rarely use these small ovals. I just got to hope I've got enough film. <laughs> I might have to dig out an old C another old CD. Oh, that will do. I'll use that for something else. Right. So what I'm going to do. This can get really messy. So I'm going to get an old mould. Not an old mould, but just another mould. And then what we want to do is just... I don't want to scratch the mould, that's the issue. Is just break it up into smaller pieces. Right, I'm going to skip this part. Right, I've got some of it broken up. You'll find a lot of it will stick to the, the mould if you're using a mould. So maybe a, a piece of tissue would be better. So I'm going to try a couple of different ways with this. So what I'm going to do is just dip my little tool, my handy little tool, into my resin. So then when I take it over to here, I can, he says, he was going to say, easily pick it up. But that's not working because it's stuck to the mould. So it's going to be back to the tweezers. What I'm going to do is lay it. It needs to be the shiny side facing downwards. Otherwise it's not going to work. So I'm going to I'm going to try I've not tried it this way before, but I'm going to try pushing some of these flakes down. Hopefully we'll get a kind of opal effect. I'm hoping And then I'll do completely cover the back, but I want really small pieces to begin with. I could go smaller. But hopefully it will give us a really good effect. Right, so once we've got some of the flakes in, I don't know whether it's going to sink and hit the surface. I'm hoping it kind of stays where I put it. <laughs> you see some micro bubbles, it's fine. They will rise and then we can just blast those. So we've got any smaller bits. Right, I'm gonna pause this and, and get as much in as I want and then we'll continue. Right, so I've done these ones and it is starting to sink, but I've kind of tried to get them angled so they kind of reflect the light off from all directions. So what I'm gonna do on this one is a little bit differently I'm gonna do it the same way that I'm gonna show you with the UV and it shouldn't sink it should just sit on the surface but this is gonna take some time I'm gonna do some bigger chunks with this as well just so it, it doesn't take too long but we want to kind of work our way around the piece and just make sure that we've covered all angles. Right, time for a pause. Right, so there you can see, I've just got to hope that I haven't got <laughs> any bubbles underneath. So now I'm going to repeat that. That didn't take too long. You can see there's some bigger chunks in there. And we're going to cover the back so there'll be no negative space really that you can kind of see so now I'm going to repeat the process but with smaller pieces in these and maybe I'll try smaller in these other three as well so I'm going to pause again because you don't want to watch me <laughs> carefully placing all these pieces of um, holographic bits see you in a moment right so 
just that one to go that you can see again I'm hoping there's no bubbles but the first pieces we put into this one and, and the others have sunk so they're going to be touching hopefully they won't come out messy I'm just going to finish this one off and then we'll start on the UV all right that was that one is done now with the UV again it can be a little bit time consuming I've only done this a couple of times maybe we'll just go for the, the round one so we want to put a small amount in first and then just cover the whole back of the bezel just so it's easier for the the vinyl holographic stuff <laughs> to um, sit where we want it to sit so it doesn't keep moving so much don't need 100% coverage but it helps and now again we're just gonna take our film bit by bit and what I've found with the UV way of doing this is that because UV resin gets hot as it's curing some little bits it, um, it causes the the stuff <laughs> to kind of bend and it takes a different kind of form but with this obviously we want it facing up not down this time I've got uh, we can just cover that bit if it's if it's turned the other way we can just cover that right so I'm just gonna crack on and, and just we we want to cover the whole piece we don't want any of that pattern to be showing through right so now the back is pretty much covered I might have missed a little bit but it's it's just a video you know you can take a bit more time we're just gonna fill the rest with a UV resin I still haven't got a proper UV lamp. Um, I've been using my little torch for quite some time now. But it does the job for me. I only make small pieces with it. Just any bubbles. Just quick blast. And then we're just going to cure that with our... I love this little torch. You know, it's, it really does the job for me. And what this will do, I don't know whether you'll see it on camera. It did the last time I tried it anyway. It kind of rippled up the film as it was curing and getting warm. I'm not sure if it's going to do it this time. Now what I'd do is I'll pause it. And then you'll see the if it's changed afterwards. It hasn't really done it this time, but you can see all of those colours. When I finish the video at the end, I'll I'll do them all in, in proper sunlight because it's really not doing it much justice at the moment. So we've just got to wait now to put the, the other back in. This is one that I did make. These were the two trial pieces that I did. You can see it's kind of rippled. I think it may just be, you can see some gaps in this one. It was just a test run. It may just depend. And this one is kind of curled up and rippled as well. But you can see just how cool they are. And you know, that would reflect really nice in any angle of light. Right. I'm going to actually, um, before we come back for the others, I'm just going to make a quick ring up and show you what that looks like. And there you have it. This is just a cheap, expandable ring. I've got some silver plated ones, but see. Yeah, it looks like a real stone, doesn't it? The UV shining on it gives it a bit of a different, it shows, you know, what it can look like but again I'll show them all at the end
I quite like the, the ring. <laughs> That's really nice. Right, we'll be back for the next part soon. See you in a bit. Right, so we just need to back these up um, with some, I'm gonna use the diamond white mica powder. And then I've got another idea for these, which I think are gonna give us some better results. So we're gonna get these out of the way first. Just one scoop of this, I think. We'll see how it goes. But what I'll do is I'll pause this bit again until I've got the right. I think that's okay actually, I might not need to pause it. I might add a little bit more, just a tiny bit. Maybe half a scoop. I think that would do. Yeah, I should have added more. Let's add some more. Let me pause this bit. I think that's better. I didn't want it to be too transparent. I did another two scoops. We're just going to back these and then get them out of the way. Because I'm hoping my other idea will give some better results. Hopefully. See if I can put a bit more in this one because it's still quite transparent. Doesn't matter if it domes. Then I kind of just stir that around. It'll do. Right, let's get this out of the way. Right, so I've had another idea of how to do this. I'm hoping it works. But we're gonna get our pieces of CD <laughs> film. And we're gonna stick them to the mold, bit by bit, and just layer it. And I think this, with maybe some white mica powder. I haven't decided yet. Could give us a, an opal effect. So I'm gonna pause this and I'll come back to you once I've, I'm happy with where I've put all my little bits. Right, so I've gone all in there and I've come up the sides of the piece as well as much as I can. I might add a, a couple more little bits. It doesn't matter if they overlay as long as they're stuck to the mould. And that bit just fell off. We'll leave it at that. Right, I'm gonna mix up some uh, some resin now. Right, so I've got my resin mixed. I've just popped some of the Let's Resin white mica. I might need to add some more. But something's telling me to add a bit of colour to this as well. Um, I've looked up some images of opal. Some of them have got like a blue or red. I think it just depends on the opal. Some of them are just white. But I don't want this too transparent. Right. I'm going to go in with just a dash of the, the blue, not too much. Just a, I really want a small amount just to see how it. I don't want it too blue, if that makes sense. Just a little bit.
try and get it to that more natural kind of colour. I think a dash more and we're good. I know I'm mixing too fast. Don't judge me. <laughs> but I'm going to let that sit for a couple of minutes just for the bubbles to surface. I think that's that's perfect. It's got a very subtle blue tone to it. Right, I'm going to let that sit for a couple of minutes just for the bubbles to rise. Right. Let's pour it in. And then we have to wait. I'm just hoping that's opaque enough. Right, see you in a bit. Right, let's see what we've got. I'm not sure that these are going to be anything spectacular. <laughs> you see, some of it's kind of rolled up. Still pretty sparkly. Again, the little rolled up bit there and there. I think those are the bits that I put in first. That kind of sank. Not very uh, opal looking anyway. Doesn't seem to fit in that bezel properly either. So these are the moulds that I normally get. But I think... They're really different quality, if you look at the difference. So I'm wondering whether the cavities are a little bit smaller. That's better. Yeah, so with that one. Right, let's see what we've got. It's still a little bit soft. but it's okay to demold. Wow. Right, so, what I think I need to do is do a top coat on this with some white, if I can. I might try UV and just see, because um, I think that's just too, it's too shiny. I think it just needs a, a quick top coat. Let me just, I'll try something and see if it works. Right, so I've glued the piece into the bezel and I've just mixed up a small amount of UV resin with some white mica powder. I'm just hoping this will kind of dull it down a little bit but still be visible. We can only try. I'm stripping everywhere but I can tidy that up afterwards. I'm not that fussed. Just want to evenly coat the whole front of the piece. Hopefully it won't take away all of the the colour. I should really use a brush for this. Just gonna spread that all around. Again, I'm gonna tidy this up afterwards. I still prefer the other one that I did with just the UV. It's 
will also fill any gaps around the bezel. Right, let's give that a quick wipe over. A bit I missed there. Make sure I've got it all. And just clean up the bezel where it's kind of spilt over. Anything else I can kind of polish off afterwards. Right, and now let's give that a blast of my torch. I think that is much better now I've coated it. It looks more like an opal now. Could possibly go with another coat, but I'll leave it as it is. Right, again, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment. Uh, if you haven't hit that sub button, hit that for me. And I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.